In Print Radio. Here's a short interview. Imprint member Sandy Colbert sits down with author Robert Ball. Welcome to Imprint Radio, Rob. Thank you. Glad to Thank have you. you here. Thanks for having me. Before we discuss your book, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? The Chicago area? No, originally I was born in Kalamazoo, Michigan, famed in song and story. Yes. Uh, I got a gal in Kalamazoo, as a matter of fact, my mom. I had a real beaver cleaver childhood, lived in the suburbs, played ball in the sand lots and things like mm-hmm. that. So real uneventful childhood. I went to Michigan State University, didn't exactly know what I wanted to do while I was in college. So I spent my time as a student activist and raising hell and protesting and pretty much anything but go to class. Yes, yes, um, I know what you're saying. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure some, some of your listeners may be able yes. to relate. Anyway, but somehow I managed to graduate. And when I got out of school, I immediately went to work selling cars and found out that I can't lie well enough to sell cars. And through a series of accidents, I ended up working in the information technology area for well over 10 years. And uh, it was while I was working for IBM that I lost my mind and decided I needed to do something different. So started a business and did that for about eight years and lost my mind again and decided that, okay, well, what's the next thing I'm going to do? Because I never have figured out what I want to be when I grow up. So I had this idea for The Good Thief. I had this idea for the story. It had been percolating in me for quite some time. And I kept yapping about it to my friends and my family. And they finally got sick of me yapping about it and said, well, why don't you just go write it? Mm -hmm. So I said, well, why not? I have time on my hands, I might as well. So I sat down and I wrote The Good Thief. It was a message that I had in my head that I wanted to get out. It's it's an inspirational story. It's the story about someone who has a really bad start in life and makes one bad decision after another. And through the course of time, things get worse and worse and worse and worse to the point where his life doesn't amount to anything and it's about to end. Okay. And what happens next? Uh, As people read the book, it's probably no mystery when you read the cover, you'll figure it out. But as you read the book, you'll recognize the main character. I've taken somebody from history, and I've updated them to the 20th century, and I've kind of filled in the gaps of the things that we don't know about this person. And it's called A Good Thief, A Tale of Mercy. Correct. So mercy is a, a mercy integral is the, part. Mercy yeah. is the theme. I'm a Roman Catholic, and mm-hmm. I wrote it from a Roman Catholic perspective. And I firmly believe that there's nothing we can ever do to so distance us from God that he won't reach out to us. And that's kind of what I tried to convey in the story. But... Not in a preachy way. I wanted the story to just tell itself, and I wanted people to get engrossed in the story. And at the end of it, if it touches them or they get that message, great, then I've succeeded. Now, there was, was there a specific incident or a specific person that inspired this or this... Well, I've spent, like a lot of Roman Catholics of my Mm -hmm. generation, you reach a certain point, and it seems like all of us, all of my contemporaries, we reach the point of 20 years old, 22 years old, and we said, why am I going to church? And so... I stopped, and I went on this long quest to find myself and to find God, and I spent a long time being angry at God, and slowly he just kept talking to me, whispering to me, and I kept being open to what was happening in my life, and slowly I made my way back to the Catholic Church, and part of the way I did that was through an association with St. Procopius Abbey in Lyle, Illinois, and I went there just out of curiosity one day. And I was really drawn in by the Benedictine spirituality. And this is kind of when I was starting to make my return to the church. And as I got more and more involved with that, I decided that I was going to become a Benedictine oblate. Benedictine oblates are people who are, they're just lay people. And they identify with Benedictine spirituality and they kind of try and model their life along those lines. But they're usually associated with a particular monastery, in my case, St. Procopius. One of the ceremonies, parts of the ceremonies, to become an oblate, is you pick an oblate name. It's kind of like for the Catholics in the audience, you Mm -hmm. know, when you were confirmed, you had a confirmation name. Yes, I know what you're saying. Um, So you pick an oblate name, and usually Benedictine oblates pick Benedictine saints. But I've never done anything the right way in my life, (laughs) so (laughs) I decided I was going to pick the name Dismas. And Dismas is the traditional name we give to the good thief. So the two thieves on the cross that were crucified with Jesus, one was Dismas, the good thief, and the other was Justice, he's the bad thief. And so 
I relate to Dismas. Consequently, and I'm not, I guess I'm giving the book away, but consequently, I wrote about Dismas. Well, that's an interesting take. <laughs> interesting so, take on history, too. Mm-hmm, yep. Well, we, you know, we don't know anything about it, so it's perfect for fiction. Exactly. I can make it up. <laughs> that's, that's what we were just talking about as far as historical fiction goes. I yes. mean, it's got to be based in reality, but mm-hmm. then you, you take it from there. Mm-hmm. Yes. A little bit of literary license. Side. What do you want the readers to take away after they've read your book? Well, hopefully, when they're done, I hope they're moved. I hope they feel like God really does love them, always will, no matter where they are. Whether they believe in him or not, he believes in them. And I want them to feel like they've been entertained because they enjoyed the book. But also that, hmm, you know, appearances to the contrary and some of the people I meet every day in life, you know, maybe God ain't so bad. Christians aren't so bad. Are you working on something new? Yes, I am. Uh, I'm laboring to finish a book which is tentatively titled A Bronze Wall. And this is about the run-up to World War II in Czechoslovakia. It centers on the adventures of a, my main character is a priest in this particular saga. Okay. And it's really more historical fiction, but again, I've taken a historical or biblical analog and I've kind of applied it in the background. It's not obvious. I mention it in the, in the preface, but as you're reading along, you don't necessarily pick that up. Right. But again, my hope is, is that when you get done reading the book, you will be entertained, you'll learn something about history, and well, maybe you'll be inclined to pick up your Bible and read that particular book in the Bible. And that's an interesting era, mm-hmm. to say the least, and an interesting part of the country. Yeah. Is there a reason you chose Czechoslovakia? My family, my ancestors are from Slovakia, um, okay. and I've always been fascinated with Central Europe and, and where my family comes from, right. because we really don't know much about my family. I can go back to my great-grandfather and beyond that, Heaven knows. It could be gypsies, you know, it could be Attila the Hun in my family tree, I don't know. But as I was studying that history, I saw a lot of parallels to things that I had read in particular book of the Bible. And the parallels became more and more really stood out to me to the point where, wow, this is kind of history repeating itself. And that's where I got the idea to write the book. The face of publishing books has changed so much in the last few years. What are your feelings about the new look of publishing? It's it's very hard for new authors, and I'm a rookie at this, so this is, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt. But for new authors, it's very difficult because traditional publishing is kind of getting very tight and kind of going away, and resources are very limited for new authors. Publishers are really honing their catalogs down. And even when they do pick up new authors, the support... And this is, again, this is just right. based on my limited experience. The support they give the author is... Minimal. Minimal. That's what I've been hearing. You're, yes. you're going to be pushing your book and selling your book just as much through a traditional publisher or if you go in the, self-publish, the self-publishing route. And now there are so many companies that, major publishing houses, that offer self-publishing too, beef up their bottom line. And those are viable options. Fifty Shades of Grey is a self-published book. It's not my, not my cup of tea, but right, it just goes right. to show you that that stigma of, oh, well, you're not really published. You did it yourself. And I think that's going away. At the end of the day, it's either a good book or it's not. And people will read it or they won't. And they're going to tell other people about it. Exactly. And they'll read it or they won't. Exactly. And if it's not a good book, it's going to sit there. Yep. So there, it's it's a risky business. It is. It is. And you, you know, let's not mince words. You've got to have a little bit of financial resource to be able to publish on your own. It's and not for everybody. really talks about. It's right. like Everyone talks about self-publishing, but then they, when you find out what the bottom line is and the investment you have to make and how many books you have to sell to get that money back, absolutely, it's a tough absolutely. decision. It's a very tough position, and if you're a first-time author like me, you know it takes a lot longer to break even. But right. I, I, I toyed around with it, and co- to be honest with you, I didn't submit my manuscript to very many publishers. As I got into it and I thought about, okay, what am I going to have to do for this to get this book out there? And I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to have to do all the same work and I could wait forever to get somebody to say, yes, they want to buy my book and publish it. So I decided, no, I just want to get the message out. Next book, maybe I'll be a little more patient with it. But for this book, I really, really wanted it out there. So I decided to go that route, go the self-publishing route. And if I can plug them, uh, I went through Westbow Press, which was a division of Thomas Nelson Publishers, and they were fabulous. And they bugged me as much as a traditional publisher. Right, which is good. <laughs> yeah. As long as they're they take supporting a real interest you. in it. Mm-hmm. As long as they're supporting you, that's the could self-publish and never. And then you're out there on your own. But if you can get some some support. If I were going to give a heads up to any new authors that are, or any current authors that are thinking, well, maybe I'll publish it myself. Really, really look into the company that you're 
going to go with because some are better than others and right. some will help you more than others. Some are it's, more expensive than others. Some are more expensive than others. You have to go that extra mile with your manuscript. You can't just leave it up to them to help you as much as you would want them to. They're not all the same. Exactly. And then, of course, there's the whole issue of ebooks too. Some people just cut the corner and they publish yes. ebooks and exclusively. Well, that's what's so confusing. I mean, before it was, you know, you got an agent and good, the agent got you published, and now we have a lot of other options which we've never had before. Right, and they get fifteen percent. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and and but when it got printed, it's there was a lot more pride, I would think, because yes. this went through an agent, this yep. went through a publisher. Yep. What, when you're self-publishing, you're basing it on your friends and family and yourself that you think this is a good book. I have a very entrepreneurial outlook, as evidenced by the time I quit my six-figure salary yes. with IBM to go start a business, that my boss took me into his office and said, what are you, nuts? When right. I told him what I was going to do. And and I said, yeah, I guess I am a little nuts. So writing a book and publishing it, I guess that's no more nuts than that. So. Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> you know, it would be just as crazy opening up a... A shoe repair shop yes, or something. Exactly. You know, exactly. it's, it's, it's Life a is business. Risk. Yes, and Life risk. is all about risk. Well, Rob, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm fun. so glad. And I hope you have nothing but success. Thank and you the so book much. again is called A Good Thief, A Tale of Mercy. List yourself as Robert Wall on mm-hmm. your books. Okay. Right. Keep right. that name in mind. It's yep. Robert Wall, A Good Thief, A Tale of Mercy. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Thanks, Sandy. You're Appreciate welcome. it.